so Joe Biden, first of all, he had this tweet, right? He said, America is back. Back again. Guess who's back? America's back. It's got 1.5 million. Yeah. America is back. What do you mean by America's back? (laughs) Like, did we ever leave? Like, did we ever stop being the country that, you know, (laughs) overthrows uh, (laughs) democratically elected leaders all over the world that continues their imperialism, that continues not dealing with the police issue that continues suppressing voices of dissent with the censorship that continues having wealth disparity. I mean, America's it didn't go anywhere. It's been here. That's the America we're talking about. But what he means to say is that America is back, meaning we're going to go back to the status quo with no opposition because we're not going to have the big orange boogeyman uh, in Donald Trump to push people to oppose anything. And we're seeing that already happen. Didn't he say that nothing would fundamentally change anyways? He did. I mean, so what are we, where are we getting back to and stuff? And really the audacity of these people to talk like this. You know, first you steal an election, which we know you stole it. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll talk about that later. And secondly, you come, like, now we're back as if we went somewhere <laughs> that it was so fucking awful. Excuse me for cursing. But, you know, like it was so awful. And all of a sudden now you're coming back. Here comes the old school uh, cabinet picks, fam. We know a lot of these people. We know a lot of these players. So, yeah, I, I think it's disgusting that they're saying this crap and stuff. And then, you know, we had the thing with Alyssa Milano trying to say, oh, uh, you know, Trumpers, let's come together after yeah. you've been, you know, just yeah. killing I, them and yeah. destroying them. There's a comparison between what she said to them and what she said to Bernie supporters. And it was just so vastly different. I mean, oh, yeah. <laughs> it was interesting. Uh, how much she more once friendly supported she Bernie. was. She uh, once did. No, she like how she Long was saying the Bernie support the Bernie supporters were all like oh, terrible. They should die. Yeah. Like like she was really bad. Uh, okay, so Biden promises to lead the world with his fresh thinking. Okay, and RT did a really great report on this. He has a wonderful security team, Joe Biden. Uh, let's kind of just br- briefly go over this right now. This article he announced his. Sec- Security picks Monday, Anthony Blinken that we've talked about for Security State, Alejandro Mayorkas for Secretary mm. of Homeland Security, Avril Haynes, that's a winner, for Director of National Intelligence, Linda Thomas-Greenfield for UN Ambassador, and Jake Sullivan as a National Security Advisor, and John Kerry as a Climate Czar. Oh, that's the, a progressive. The the name <laughs> Czar, I, I don't know why, in their all their criticisms of Russia and of like all these places, like they they use the name czar, right? It's a, no, no, no. Like, they no, they no, use no. that. That's a that's that like a terminology. Yeah, yeah. Like the um, what was it? What's his name? Was the uh, Ronald Klein was the um, the uh, Ebola czar. Ah. Um. Okay. So America is back, ready to lead the world, not retreat from it. Biden declared on Tuesday. What does that uh-huh. mean? Not retreat from it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, blah, blah, blah. They all served, all his six security specials, all of them served on the Obama administration in some capacity. And Biden's speech suggested that his administration would pick up where Obama left off. Um, and he said, we're going to have a f- the first woman lead the intelligence community, the first Latino, an immigrant to lead the Department of Homeland Security and a groundbreaking breaking diplomat in the United Nations. Um <laughs> Uh, this is it. This is what I wanted to point out. The identity politics coupled with appeals to his new nominee's credentials was the order of the day for Biden. Blinken, for example, was introduced as a man who, quote, strengthened Americans alliances and led to diplomatic efforts in the fight against ISIS. A man who comes from a family of immigrants and refugees and Holocaust survivors. And um, <laughs> Blinken was involved in the... <laughs> In the arming of, and we're going to go into this a little bit deeper, but ar- ar- arming the, the rebels in Syria, he orchestrated the lobbying of uh, of the bombing of the, of Serbia in 1999, and then, of course, the U.S. to arm the U- uh, Ukraine against Russia, and he is a- am- ambiguous on China, and Alejandro Mayorkas was described bo- as both a consummate professional who would rot- ridden the Homeland Security Department of the chaos, dysfunction, and absolute cruelty of the Trump administration. <laughs> but Mayorkas has been lauded by liberals for championing a path to citizenship for immigrants. He also occupied the number two spot on the department as the Obama administration and detained and caged children and deported more immigrants than any other administration in history. So um, so, so you guys know, that's that's kind of who they're 
I love the way they use the identity politics to try to make everything good, to gloss over the fact that these people's ideologies are warmongers and evil people and they're globalists and shit. But they they hit the, oh, the first Latino, the first woman, you know what I'm saying? A guy who's a Holocaust survivor family and whatnot and stuff. But the ideology sucks. We talked about Blinken. He's god awful. Blinken yelled at freaking Joe Biden for not being enthusiastic enough for going into Syria. Yeah. That, literally. That's, yeah, 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 yeah. That was what he yelled at him about. And, you know, once again, Ukraine, he was all about. This guy's a regime change aficionado, but he's cool with Grover, so everything's okay. <laughs> exactly. He's, he's tight cool with, with Grover. Grover. And let's talk about Haynes for a minute. So Avril Haynes is going to be the director of uh, the uh, intelligence. And Haynes aided in the covering up that the CIA's backing of the Senate servers in 2014 as the Intelligence Committee was compiling a report into the agency's use of torture. Haynes also helped craft Barack Obama's controversial drone warfare policy, which resulted in the deaths of hundreds of civilians in multiple countries, including at least one American citizen. Yeah. So, um, and, and Biden's cabinet, of course, has been hailed by many liberals as uh, competence and, and for its competence and diversity. And like diversity. I said, they love to throw that word around. They do. And it's, it's hilarious yeah. because that was just a brief oversight as to who these, who these people <clears throat> are mainly um, uh, Blinken and Haynes. But let's, we've talked about him before, but there's so much dirt on this guy yeah. that there's so much uh, to be Ooh, said. Blinken, right? Yeah. So, Blinken who worked for Clinton, Biden, and, and Obama, and Obama the all trifecta. three, the trifecta we call it. The yeah. trifecta. <laughs> so just a reminder, you know, he was de- secretary of state for Obama uh, and, Bi- and Biden security advisor. And from 1994 to 2000, as Pasta said, he was Clinton's uh, national security council. And just so you know, these are just bullet points. He strongly pushed for the war in Iraq. Where'd you get this from, by the way? Was this on? what? No, I made this. Oh, you made this. Can yes. we put this up on Instagram? Okay. Where is it already there? No, it's not there. Okay, sorry. Okay. So he was prone use uh, of of and target pro pro drone use and uh, of pro targeted attacks. This is the foreign policy he's um, pushing. He's pro sanctions. He's a NATO guy. We saw with Grover, he was pushing NATO, uh, very pro democracy narrative to destabilize nations. He advocating the bombing in Libya and Yemen, as we saw. He also pushed the false narrative of the moderate rebels, we'll which I'm going to go that. into that a little bit deeper. He um, these moderate rebels, of course, were affiliated with Al Qaeda and in Syria and he participated in the coup of helping arm the neo-Nazis in Ukraine and he was an anti-whistleblower and anti-Assange he specifically mentions that and he is pro-censorship and part of Silicon Valley so they killed two burns with one stone on that mm-hmm. and he is, has very Zionist uh, policies yeah. as well he did work for Facebook and Google I believe right um, so I mean what you, like you said he kills two birds with one stone and I also want to point out the fact that you know I know in Obama's book that's been out there right now he's talking about drone warfare and the way they sold this thing like fam we're going to pull the troops out the troops won't be there anymore we're just going to use drones instead but what that does it kills civilians at a much much higher rate right. when you have drones than as God forbid you know you have to have troops right. in and there, they so paint it as oh we're yeah. helping these people yeah. which is the worst part it's very psychopathic the farmers the plumbers um so uh, okay so i'll do that okay so um he wanted to actually strike syria as early as 2013 he uh welcomed the the syrian surrendering of its chemical weapons to international control and that was uh, that was what he wanted. He was deputy national security advisor at that time. And he said, we would welcome a decision and action by Syria to give its, up its chemical weapons. The whole point of what we're doing is to stop Syria from using these weapons again. <laughs> he said that the United States would take a hard look at the new Russian proposal for Syria to surrender its chemical weapons, but warned that any initiative would take time, resources and <laughs> probably a peaceful environment so again this is um this is this is the, the way they frame it like oh we're just helping syria we're helping um to yeah. uh to to you know get these get rid of these people get, get to to get the people away from bashar al-assad from these these brutal dictators that we have um it won't let me get in there. yeah i i started taking pictures because of that But um, let me just go down there. So in Syria, the militias armed by the Pentagon, uh, if you guys recall, were fighting 
those armed by the CIA. Yeah, yeah. No and sure. that was that was really stupid. And, you know, you can see the picture here. Unintended conflict, CIA armed Syrian rebels clash with the Pentagon uh, backed militias along the Turkish border. So this is relevant because this was happening during w the time when he was in charge. And um, the attacks by one U.S. backed coup against another come amidst continuing the heavy fighting in Syria and illustrate the difficulty in facing U.S. efforts to coordinate among dozens of armed groups who are trying to overthrow the government of President Bashar al-Assad, uh, fight the Islamic State militant groups and battle one another all at the same time. Adam Schiff hmm, said it is an favorite. enormous challenge. Uh, the top Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee, who described the clashes between U.S. supporter groups as a fairly new phenomenon, um, Obama had authorized a Pentagon plan to train and arm Syrian rebel fighters. So this is like the history because this this is what really happened. We had literally trained and armed Syrian rebel fighters and we called them the moderate re rebels, but they weren't moderate. Uh, relaunching a program that was suspended in the fall after a string of embarrassing setbacks, which included recruits being ambushed and handing over much of their U.S. issued ammunition and trucks to an Al-Qaeda affiliate. Hmm. And um, amid the setbacks, the Pentagon deployed about 50 operation forces to Kurdish held areas in the northeastern of Syria to better coordinate with his militias and helped ensure U.S. backed rebel groups weren't fighting one another. But that's not what happened. And um, that was part of it, what, you know, what, like I said, people like Vanessa Bealey and Eva Bartlett were talking about when they were trying to talk about how the the moderate rebels weren't moderate at all. They were affiliated with, with uh, neo-Nazi groups, even uh, those weapons ended up in the hands of these neo-Nazis, but they were also affiliated with Al Qaeda groups. And um, he was a part of that. He was completely in favor of that. He helped push the narrative that Bashar al-Assad had chemical weapons and that these weapons were used against the people, even though. They knew that it was completely false. Neo-Nazis in Ukraine, the craziest jihadists in Syria. And the whole time, fam, he always used this kind of Russian uh, scare as again. Yeah. He was a Russian gator. He would always constantly bring up Putin. But a lot of his policy, it seemed, was really uh, came from what is Russia going to do? We have to do this to make sure that yeah. Russia doesn't have a foothold in yeah. Syria. You know, so he was he was always Russia, Russia, Russia. And he was a big time Russia gator, too, as well. So expect yeah. more of the same. And just like Fareed Zakaria. So. Yeah, so uh, Donald Trump was right to strike uh, Syria, and and um and he said that he actually he actually said that. Uh, let's go look at it. He said um, President J. Donald Trump was right to strike at the regime of the Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. This is in 2017 for using a weapon of mass destruction, the nerve agent Saron, against Sar 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 Sarin, against its own people. Mr. Trump may not want to be the president of the world, but when a tyrant blatantly violates a basic norm of international conduct, in this case, the ban on using chemical or biological weapons in armed conflict put in place after World War One, the world looks to America to act. Mr. Trump did. And for that, he should be commended. So here it is. <laughs> here it is. Like yeah. this is this is him thanking trump for acting right and then saying he needs to do more he later goes on to talk about how he needs to do more to combat the assad regime the again the those weapons were fake there was no yeah. chemical attack that was all they already had two fake. debunked one and this is yes. the third one this was you know, not I, even that long yeah ago. this they had two debunked ones this is the third one that was also debunked as well you know that's when the white helmets came into play when they yes. just showed up acting like things had happened uh but that once again this is a this is also what happens when you also control the mainstream media they yeah. don't talk about these things they don't investigate it it was just like the type of rogue once again yeah. reporters out there out there just talking about what well, something's going on in syria and you know even led to dennis kucinich and uh tulsi Gabbard going out there to find out what's going right. on because the the you know the state department and guys like blinken would put this kind right. of narrative out that it's all about they're gassing their own people they're awful we have to stop them we have to arm these and moderate these, rebels and these yeah. farmers to go fight them and it was every it was just a lie because it was a geopolitical move it was and it was also at the behest of israel because he's a zionist and therefore you know what i'm saying um and so it, yeah it, it's pretty bad and I can't tell you how many people came to me like uh, bashing Tulsi Gabbard on that uh, when she was saying no, like questioning oh, the narrative. So stupid. And um, like I said, I mentioned uh, Vanessa Bealey and Eva Bartlett because they extensively covered that Vanessa Bealey on the ground in Syria and and talked to people and they use children. I mean, these people use children as 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 a form of um, manufacturing consent for this. They use freaking 
dead children. And this guy was at the helm of that, pushing and pushing this narrative. It's disgusting. If if they can use children to manufacture consent, what else do you think they're going to use? I mean, come on. Yeah, it, it's yeah. absolutely disgusting. Yeah. And he also wanted a, Obama to change Assange, uh, to charge Assange and Snowden to face charges. This is from CNN directly. He actually was in an interview and he said, um, they asked him, Tony, what did you make? Uh, of course, uh, the attorney general will be careful in speaking publicly about any plan of bringing charges against Julian Assange in order to secure his arrest. But what do you make of this reporting that the Justice Department is preparing, has found a way, if you will, to try? They want to bring charges against Assange, which I want to know what's charged. Tony Blinken said. And right then, at this moment, he was a CNN global affairs analyst. So yeah. there he is again, security guy, foreign policy warmonger at CNN mm -hmm. as a affairs, a global affairs analyst. He said, well, you know, they're walking a very, very fine line. It's very challenging. Look, I have no there's no love loss for Julian Assange. And the person says, right, you would have loved to have done it as well. I mean, Blinken said, absolutely. Referring to bringing charges on Julian Assange. But we want to make sure that first we're not having a chilling effect in the media and on the press. And there's a real issue there. If he is simply publishing information that happened to come his way, albeit classified, that doesn't make him a whole heck of a lot different, perhaps, than the New York Times and the Pentagon Papers or CNN. But if, on the other hand, he is actually instructing people to try to steal classified information that he can publish, that might be different. That's been that stupid argument. Exactly. That stupid argument. And then he goes on. But <laughs> what I would focus on is this was Assange. What we've seen in recent months, of course, are reports that he may have colluded and WikiLeaks may have colluded with the Russians there to infiltrate goes. the election and put out information that they did, got to WikiLeaks, and we know what happened from that. That's where the focus, I think, should be. And of course, I'd focus on Mr. Snowden, who is not a publisher, who was sworn to protect secrets as an employee of the government and who violated that trust. And he should certainly come back and face justice. That is the kind of guy that we are going to have uh, directing our, our foreign freaking policy yep. that is the kind of guy that people were so happy oh yay we removed donald trump that's the freaking guy that guy is gonna censor the hell out of us that guy is going to go and put the boot of america everywhere else and it's going to get much worse and we're not even going to be able to talk about it because we're going to be censored no. you see this guy you see <laughs> and he's it's working disgusting. for Facebook and Google to make sure he, he's got a good eye on what I mean, the hell we can perfect. say and what he's we can say. For them. Kill two birds with one stone. Politico, fam. But he's perfect for them, fam. And um, the OK, so so this guy, in addition to being uh, Silicon Valley, uh, mainstream media, warmonger, he also had his foot in this consulting company um, that he created with these three other freaking warmongers. Um, and it was called West Exec Advisors. And um, it's it's um, basically it was on it was in the White House uh, grounds between the West Wing and the Eisenhower Executive Office building. That's where they pretty much did their business. And the people that formed this were uh, Michelle Flurney. And um, she was president initially uh, president elect Joe Biden's uh, a c contender for secretary of state. She got so much backlash that he might not pick her. And one of uh, the other people was Avril Haines. So you got Tony Blinken. You got Michelle Flournoy, 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 who has such a horrible record that even Biden is con reconsidering. And then you have Avril Haines, who is now the director of uh, the, the foreign policy. And she is also uh, a also was a uh, it's going to be the director of national intelligence she's been involved in intelligence before and we're going to go into her in a little bit but those three formed this 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 company and the things they did in that company it was basically a lot of consulting a lot of uh just deep state kind of operations that you couldn't really get your hands on and you can't really see what they worked for because they they're not they're not uh they're not going to disclose it they haven't disclosed it yeah. so it, it's absolutely um scary that that's happening and i just wanted to point out this tweet that somebody posted underneath my tweet and uh secretary of state tony blinken's firm directly lobbied google to create the ai system for u.s killer drone <laughs> avril haynes for a uh, director of national intelligence admitted to destroying the cia torture tapes and but, but yeah, yeah no, no issues. issues so there you go so that's just a little uh summary but 
um, looking closer to Avril Haines, of course, a woman. So I'm so excited, fam, that we're going to have a woman <laughs> as a director of national intelligence yet again. She was also the deputy national security advisor to Obama mm -hmm. and is an ex-CIA deputy director directly working as a spook. She, uh, as a deputy CIA director during that time, she actually helped design Obama's program of using drones for extrajudicial killings, meaning that these killings were never going to come into, um, you know, into question. And she is currently on the board of directors for Center for a New American Security, or CNAS, which is, of course, funded by weapons manufacturers like Raytheon, Northrop Gunman, Lockheed Martin, Wall Street slash the banks, J.P. Morgan Chase, Bank of America, the Fuel Industry Corporation, Chevron, BP, and also uh, sh that CNAS is funded by Palantir, who is in the national, the U.S. National Security Council, in the office of director of national intelligence. Um, I think we should take a second for and think about all those progressives <laughs> out there who said that we were <laughs> mitigating damage that we can. Uh, Joe Biden was pushable. We can push him to the left. This is the this is the guy we want to fight. Well, why aren't you fighting this right now? I saw Medea Benjamin do a video about one of these ladies. I don't know if it was Avril or what's her name. Um, I believe it. Her name is. You put it over Flournoy. here. Flournoy. Yeah, but yeah, yeah I, I think it, that she's so awful. And, no, yeah, that, and Medea Benjamin was doing a, a dance about like <laughs> you got to get rid of this and stuff. But where are the progressives? Where are the people They're who not said? Get rid of them. I mean, they didn't know about any of these people anyways. Yeah. They never looked, and that's what I'm saying. That if you don't understand, you know, the foreign policy and and the and you know players and who they it's are. just terrible. And that the fact that you just gave the keys back to a psycho and Joe Biden and his <laughs> minions to go start driving down it's crazy. It's not even Joe and, Biden that's got the keys. It's yeah. No. CIA, as you can yeah. see, it's the NSA, yeah. the the freaking Silicon Valley, yeah. Wall Street. Joe Biden just sitting shotgun yeah, with his glasses like, hey. on, eating an ice cream cone. Yeah. What up, corn pop? <laughs> That's what he's, uh, so, uh, so just a little bit more on Palantir. Uh, it, it's a CIA uh, affiliated mining company. So the Intercept did an article earlier this year, actually, because she was we knew she was being considered. Um, and th it's a data mining firm, basically. And they the basically the story is that they took, if you guys recall, they took her biography off of off of the Internet after she joined the campaign. So I just wanted to point that out. Uh, it, it's it's really bad. They removed the, the record that she had there. And um, she's also a, a Brennan loyalist fam well, she's there like we go. one of the worst better and, than a clapper loyalist i guess or is it the same thing uh, uh, might be the same thing so Jesus. she he he i was actually giving her accolades in this article um uh it was a direct statement from him he was the cia director then john brennan and when she was selected as deputy national security advisor in 2014 um he was saying the selection of Avril Haines to serve as the president's deputy national security advisor is a fitting testament to her outstanding intellect, superb judgment, substantiative expertise, and a total dedication to our country's security. As much as I wish she could continue to serve as deputy director of CIA, a role in which she has excelled. Huh. I know that Avril is ideally suited to serve the president and our country in her new assignment. I very much look forward to continuing our partnership as we address a wide array of national security challenges America faces around the globe. And here it is. As the first woman to serve as deputy director, there you go. Avril set a powerful example for every woman at this agency and for women across the country. I speak for the entire CIA family and thank <laughs> Avril for applying her remarkable talents, creativity, and energy to our mission and for helping lead the agency at this critically important time She's in Woman fam. I am so Rejoice. happy that we have this woman. I mean, it's just so wonderful that she is. She's there. It's just I am beside myself, fam. Well, you she's know, that's what's going to be said. You know how this progressive is going to be. It's like, oh, this is the first woman that's going to lead the CIA or the intelligence community. It's like, does that really matter if she's crazy? I mean, <laughs> Gina Haspel, we called her bloody Gina Haspel yeah, for a reason. Gina. These people are once again. They're justifying their drone st strikes and killing innocent civilians, and they're hiding that shit too as well. And they're getting so the rewarded. Can't get a hold of it. it. Yes, they are. And now they're here they are. Up. They're back again. They're failing up. Yeah. They're getting rewarded for failing because Globalists none of this has worked. Make millions of dollars. None of this has worked for for the American people. It's worked for them. I mean, yeah. they're sitting pretty, but everybody else, like, yeah. it hasn't worked. Well, for they them. have the media that go on and lie and pray to paint a pretty face i mean brennan and clapper still go on mainstream media yeah. and msnbc like yeah. on the reg yeah. yet meanwhile they got caught lying and it doesn't make a difference clapper lied to congress brennan's been lying to the people for so how, how long but they keep on propping up these people and here you are again msnbc cnn nbc here they go
So this is a Biden's national security advisor. OK, and he he's his name is Jake Sullivan. Um, he delivered some remarks and um, basically um, he's he's another spook, <laughs> in other words. And we don't have to watch that because I don't want to hear this guy talk. But uh, he was a senior policy advisor for Hillary Clinton's campaign in 2008 and 2016. So during the times when Hillary Clinton was running to become um, Madame President, he advised her directly in his campaign. But he was also the national security advisor to Joe Biden. Um, so uh, that is a very important thing to note with this guy. And he was also part of the uh, Alliance for Securing Democracy Advisory Council, which is basically a uh, one of those uh, think tanks that is, you know, a pro democracy, like an NGO type of, of council that wants to spread democracy and protect our national security, which translates to imperialism, censorship, yeah. uh, et cetera. So resource extraction coming yep. to a, a, a country near you. Michael so, Chertoff, did you want to say anything about this dude or no? No, 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 no. I was just showing the uh, the page. But I, I wanted to say that, you know, this is just what three people that I'm pointing out in, in Biden's cabinet. It takes time to actually point out the rest. I mean, we could be here for hours. Hours. They're all really bad, but these are the the, the main. We got foreign policy. We the got uh, the intelligence. We got the um, the the security advisor. All these people are going to be involved in foreign policy and national security, which uh, of course is going to affect us directly because we're going to be bombing, droning everybody. CNN isn't going to talk about it. They're going to go on CNN, in fact, and talk about how they're helping Syrians. They're going to go as they bomb them and sanction them. They're going to go on MSNBC and talk about how, oh, we're protecting democracy. Uh, we're spreading democracy in, in the Middle East. For sure, they're going to try to go into the global south. They're going to try to go into Venezuela. They're going to try to go into Bolivia. We we had uh, Ben Norton on and he was saying, you know, that that's likely going to continue at, at maybe possibly at an accelerated rate under the Biden administration. And this this is a part of it, guys. We need to know who these people are. You need to be talking about the records. You need to be talking about the, what they did, because otherwise nobody else is going to talk about it. CNN isn't going to talk about that. They're going to paint a pretty picture that doesn't exist. So, well, I'm just thinking about the troops that were kind of set to come home right now from Afghanistan and Syria yep. and trying to get the hell out of there in Iraq you know those bases and whatnot like obviously he made this power move to get these people out before christmas but can you imagine them just sitting there waiting and hearing the fact that about who's coming into play and they're like yeah. oh no let's get out of here before we can yeah. as soon as i get back to the states i'm going mia you ain't gonna find my ass so that's a good point fam. you know